Hello, my name is Vachu Chilakamari. I'm from Hyderabad, India, and I came to this country in 1978. Um, I, I, I went to school, I have a bachelor's degree in biology, and I, I went to school here for four years, studied drawing and painting. And uh, I was doing most, for 10 years, I've worked on color pencil professionally, and uh, that medium did, was not good enough as I was growing in art. I wanted, um, I was getting really very hyper, very, um, I, I, was, I was not happy with the medium because the color pencil was too methodical, very therapeutic and it did not give me any kick that I was, uh, and I wanted to, so I tried to, my medium to oil and uh, I chose oil because it was the only medium that would give me, reflect my um, spontaneity onto the canvas without any hesitation and it would give me the marks that I wanted to. My method is uh, depict instinctively and um, worry about what has come later. And I did my paintings extremely um, when, when my emotions are completely, I paint, I want to, I only edit my paintings and uh, I know when I'm done, when my paintings are completely highly expressive and nothing else to give. And um, I, did, I want to ev bring evocation, evocation to my painting, into my painting. As a citizen, I, as a U.S. citizen, I pride myself in um, gaining experiences as a, for my travels, and I want to. Dip, um, uh, my contributions are here because I, I'm, I became an artist in, in uh, U.S. and not in India. So the Indian culture, maybe the colors, may have some influence on me. But um, as an artist, I have uh, European influences and American abstractions, and I paint um, abstract because um, the philosophy I depict is valuing and devaluing um, the nature to show the importance of nature. I, I destroy the nature in a way in my paintings, so I, I would show the value of it, the importance of it. But especially in this Adriatic paintings, I've shown um, the passage of time. I cannot bring back the time um, next day. So that was my, was my preoccupation. Um, my most, the key to my work is my method is instinctive. Most importantly, there's to, there's for the spontaneity to be very effective, my, uh, my, I draw from my preoccupation, so it, it is a link to my expressiveness. And um, this, this is the, uh, these are the paintings that I want to show in the library. I, I want to, as a citizen, I want to depict my influences, my experiences, and um, these paintings uh, reflect uh, my temperament, my influences, my interpretation of the sea, of the sea uh, and also my appreciation to the viewer. I'm Lucinda Cobley, I'm a painter and I work primarily with glass um, and other translucent materials. I was originally born in Birmingham, UK and I studied there um, initially at art school. I always knew I wanted to be an artist and I moved up to Staffordshire to study glass design um, and later moved to London where I became more involved in the graphic arts. I was an illustrator and after a period of time of teaching in the UK, in London and working as a freelance illustrator, I moved out to Houston with my husband in the late 90s and uh, we've been here ever since. We've set up home and we're very settled here and uh, it's given me a great opportunity to develop my um, career as an artist. Um, this is an example of my work. Um, this series is called Elemental Desire 
and this particular piece is called Pollinium. Um, all of my work is based uh, on organic natural forms and I paint shadows of objects and this particular series I actually painted from taking shadows of trees originally um, from Memorial Park. Um, I was looking at the spatial um, characteristics of the trees in the park and um, devoted um, my time to collecting images, photographs and so on um, to, to study their forms. I've been exhibiting in Houston for many years now in different areas such as the non-profit spaces um, like the Art League and Diverse Works and um, more recently in commercial art galleries. The great thing about being an artist in Houston is it's a really wonderful, um, it has a wonderful art scene here, um, great community. Um, there are many artists and many art professionals that um, really help to help you to build your career um, and I've been very fortunate in that the people that I've met have been really contributed a lot for that a lot in a lot of ways to that. My name's Carol Farmion. I'm from Houston and I've lived here for about 25 years. I'm a visual artist. Uh, the cultural influences on my work include mainly the colors, textures, curvilinear sh shapes and forms that I've been exposed to in the Middle Eastern art and culture itself. My grandparents immigrated from Syria around 1918, and I would say that has a lot to do with interest in Middle Eastern art, culture. All these visual examples are very easily accessible here in Houston. You don't have to go very far to find such diversity here in art, food, rugs, icons, stained glass, it's all here. One of my favorite places to visit is the Byzantine Chapel and the many Orthodox churches here in Houston. Viewing some of the work there has made me want to create my own personal altars, which I have created here. Some of the beaded embroidered pieces I've made are also the result of my interest in textiles, and those patterns can be found everywhere, such as rugs, stained glass, and mosaics. I'm very happy to be a part of this kickoff celebration for Citizenship Week. I hope everyone will enjoy looking at the diverse art that we have displayed here, and I I hope everyone has a great time. My name is Yuru. I um, am a Taiwanese artist. And I paint on um, raw canvas, traditional canvas like this. And I come to the, the idea one day, I think as a painter, what we really do is we paint on people's heart. My canvas is your heart. So what we want to do is, I, I create this um, project in 2005. And in 2005, I got a grant from this, the county, uh, it's called Catch, and to start a, a, a project called Echoes of Language. For this project, I went to the refugee, immigrants, all the people in Houston, and I bring them, a, say, like a sheet of paper, and I ask them to write a word or whatever word from their, their mother tongue. And this is what I got. I got a book, installation, and here I present a piece. This is a collage, and it's a collage of everybody's word because I believe that everyone who can speak a language is a curator of a masterpiece. Actually, this word comes inspired by the refugee from Sudanese. They told me when their word were cut off, then when language were cut off, the people die because this blood, that is the blood that carry the cultural heritage. This is a project, in this project, artist is just a vehicle. And I, as an 
artist presents the, you know, a vehicle for people, for real people to write their real world. Hello, my name is Gus Capriva. I'm a director and owner of Redbud Gallery in the Houston Heights. Uh, I'm here to talk a little about James Searles and his work uh, in correlation with this project. Uh, an example of his work, an early piece that was done in Splendora, Texas, is here on the coffee table before me. My background with Searles, uh, I met him through my wife in the late 80s, uh, Searles was a, a teacher at the University of Houston Art Department, along with several other great artists. And the building, uh, one of the art buildings burned that year, and the, he moved the uh, sculpture department, and followed by the painters, over to a telephone cable building, an old cable building on Hillman, and they call it the Lawndale Art Center. So it ended up being a center for art where students work day and night doing the art. And to this day, that Lawndale Art Center still exists uh, on South Main Street. After, after that relationship, uh, I've known Searles. My wife was its first TA at Lawndale. I've known him for 30 years. And the particular piece that you'll be seeing in the exhibit at, uh, at the library space is called uh, Bridge with Nine Diamonds. The, the piece in question, Nine Diamonds on a Bridge, I think it's the bridge was moved from East Texas, Flandora, to Basalt, Colorado. And the diamonds represent he and his wife, Charmaine, and their seven daughters. Diamonds, wonderful family members. He, he's a storyteller, and many, many of his works are representing an uh, autobiography of, of himself and his family. Uh, another way you could look at the piece as a bridge, he, he was responsible for bridging a gap. That's what's interesting about this piece because it is a bridge between where, let's say, the vitality of the Houston art scene did not exist at that time. And he, through the creation of the Lawndale Center, he was the catalyst that provided uh, uh, a rebirth or a, a reemergence of, of uh, art in Houston. And I, I consider him one of our premier Texas artists. What he's done for Texas art is, uh, let's say, move it to another level from where it was. And to this day, he and his wife, Charmaine Locke, are still supporting the visual arts at all levels. Hi, my name is Sasha Lazar, and I'm very proud to be living and creating art in Houston, Texas. I believe that we all have certain talents and abilities within us, and it's our life's mission to try to express those as best we can. I feel the most in tune with this when I'm painting, when I'm creating. I paint not so much because I can, but because I feel that I must, and that it's um, a necessity for me to do so. My background is a little bit of a, a mix. I'm Caribbean and I also have some African influences in my artwork as well as American. My family immigrated from Port-au-Prince, Haiti to New York, which is where I grew up. And we moved from there to West Africa. I grew up in the Congo until my early teens, at which point we came back to the United States. I feel that some of those early experiences um, and the culture living on, so different, on those different continents helped shape the way that my artwork um, is expressed today. Um, you wouldn't say that my artwork is typical African art, nor is it Haitian, but definitely those influences um, are expressed in the way that I use my colors and the textures that I use and the subject matter. My artwork aligns with the theme of Citizenship Week in that it represents a bustling, lively, urban, contemporary city. There's a lot of things happening all at once, has a lot of different layers, um, a lot of life. I think that the colors on the canvas, the way they interact, it sings, and to me that represents how I see Houston. I don't have a lot of formal art training, and initially that used to frustrate me, that I could not get the images on canvas exactly the way that I see them in my head. But I've since then learned to relax and enjoy the creating process. I enjoy the journey that art takes me on, and I love it best when the artwork develops into the final form just organically.
Hi, my name is Kay Wen, and I am a visual artist. Um, I do ceramics, and among other things. Um, I'm Vietnamese. I was born in Vietnam, and I came over um, at the end of the Vietnam War. And so my work is definitely reflective of my heritage. One of the things that I started doing, and not because I wanted to, but just by default, and it's taken a long time, but I've discovered that I really love it. Um, I teach. I teach ceramics, and I teach drawing, and I teach whatever else that I can. But by that, um, the process of learning to be a teacher has taught me a lot about myself and learning to, to understand um, human behavior. But as a, a social impact, I interact with a lot of people. And for me, when I teach, I consider myself a mentor, I consider myself a conduit, and that means I'm relaying the things that I know. I share, I share with my students, whether they're, they're four or five-year-olds or they're, you know, 70-year-olds. You know, so I do projects. I teach, I do projects, I make things. All those are, are my work. And the pieces that I'll actually, or that I have in the show, they're the pills, and they're also some functional pieces. So the pieces that are more conceptual would be the sculptural pieces, and they are, are from a, a show called The Art of Happiness. So they're pill forms. They're large size uh, capsules. So they're recognizable as a pill. And the pill is actually a, a metaphor um, for the way that we deal with our, our undesirable or things that we kind of like shuffle away. You know, and then I included a couple of, of the small pottery pieces because I started out making art as a child, just painting and drawing. But when I actually learned how to make pots, I think that was really the time that I invested in being quiet and sitting down and, and being reflective. The simple explanation about art for me is um, it allows us to, I think, just, just interact to express. I mean, there's so, so many reasons, but it's about life. My name is Mari Omori. Um, I was born and raised in Japan, but I live here now uh, almost 31 years. And I'm a visual artist. I went to grad school and uh, West Coast at UCLA. And um, it, it received some influence of West Coast artists and art concepts and so on. And then after moving to Texas, I become much more aware of uh, where exactly uh, root of my uh, aesthetics coming from. So I'm going back in a way and search for my true identity. So I'm looking for my authentic identity. And um, you might be able to see some of the, uh, my influences uh, in the back panel behind me. And these are the photographs that I took while I was in Japan. Um, for three months, uh, from September un until December, that I was uh, in artisan residency in a small little village it's called Mino. And that's a paper making village, and that's where I learned how to make papers, uh, how to make lanterns, how to interact with community, uh, children and the people. The images behind me is really based on the trip I took and uh, life that I lived in this village. And um, I'm very proud of this in a, in a way that um, it really shows uh, some of the uh, patterns and, design and de designs and objects that uh, you can find, uh, you can find uh, in Japan. I have been very active in uh, Houston arts community. I curate shows, I go to artist openings, um, I open my studio to other artists and curators and directors of uh, institutions. Also, I do a lot of workshop with um, Museum of Fine Arts Houston, um, other organizations as well. So it's a, I see myself uh, very uh, 
engaging to the uh, art community in Houston, which is a vibrant and very dynamic uh, international uh, uh, diverse uh, people uh, from uh, the culture uh, coming from other, other uh, countries and so on. When you think about the uh, work that in this show um, behind me uh, in, the, in, the, in the panels uh, relates to this theme. This time it's a citizenship week and many faces of Houston is that um, perhaps I, my work demonstrate and clearly reflects on where I came from. Uh, the Japan is, has a long history behind um, and has a certain sense about aesthetics that are, tend to be very reductive and uh, simple and um, you may not find those in the, in the images, you know, every images, but there is a certain decorativeness, the ornamental and the pattern that are repeat itself and um, um, some of the objects that are maybe I'm holding in my hands and some of the backdrops of the images that are certainly reflective of a diversity, diverse uh, background that I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm came, I came from. My name is Karine Parker Lemoine. I'm French and I moved from uh, Paris to Texas, Houston, Texas, two years ago. I've been painting since I'm five and, uh, and I started my art, on my art, academic art studies when I was a teenager in France, in Amiens. I've been um, studying, um, I, did, I studied um, art uh, for three years uh, in an academic art school. And but during this time, I decided to, uh, because it was hard to make a living, to uh, to um, to do a master's degree in economics, and uh, and I finally really resumed my my career two years ago when I uh, moved uh, to Houston, Texas. My decision to come to Texas and uh, be on counter with Houston and its people have com have completely changed the way I paint. Um, because I think of the force of the land and uh, its light and because of um, the strength of this, um, of this country I have uh, started to, uh, to start to paint from, um, from within to let, myself, uh, to let myself free. So some paintings have waves, some paintings have movement um, that carry you. I've always been attracted by that. That's what I like to introduce movement and color in my paintings so that uh, the flow can trans transport you to the painting's universe. So this painting, Life Force, talks about the life, that, the force of life that takes you where you need to go, a force that may make you discover new territories. But I think to do so, you need to, most of the time you need the support of other people, the support of your community. That's why you see all the people coming together uh, to, go, uh, to go and move forward. And um, so that's why I really trust the, the ability to the community to help, uh, to help us grow and to help us to, uh, to find our true self and our true um, purpose in life. And as a member of this community, I feel that I have responsibilities. I want to, uh, I want to be um, a part of the art community, of course. I want to engage you in the art, the art endeavors. I want to, um, I want to bring more artists together to create a space, for instance, uh, to um, to interact with the audience and the between the audience and the artist. And I really feel that each of us can uh, can change the world and can make it a better world. Hi, my name is Emma Setkahau, and I'm American citizen. Well, actually I was born in Czechoslovakia, which of course now it's Czech Republic and Slovakia. But when I grew up there, it was a communist country, and I was fortunate enough to get out of there when um, I was certain age and I left in 1975 and I came to New York as a good immigrant. Um, 
From the first moment, I knew that was a really, really good decision. And, uh, and I still do. When we grew up, we just didn't have things. We just had to make things work for us. So I learned from that time to take very ordinary things and make them work. And um, I think that goes to the next thing, how I started doing my art here in the United States. Well, about my art, one thing I can say, I'm very, very passionate about my art. I believe in it, I breathe it, I live it. I'm a painter, I'm a sculptor, I'm a photographer, and I'm a designer, and everything in between, if you can imagine. I believe in second chances in life. I did get the second chance in life, and so many people in Houston, and many artists, and which I'm very, very proud to be one of them. So my art being about the second chances is about the materials, the way this is, the way I, I look at life. I think the painting right behind me is a really, really good example of it. Um, these uh, pieces that you see right here that I made the flowers out of it are made out of lead that you see on the top of your roof, on an everyday roof, and every time you're going to go and look at the roof, now you're going to look at for these leads, I can guarantee you that. So these are the pipes. So when they replaced them, I rescued them and made these beautiful flowers out of them. And the background that you see right here is made out of cigarette ashes. And as a good European, of course I was smoking. And who doesn't smoke that, right? So I finally got rid of that. Now I make all my friends that they still smoking, collect all the ashes and I paint with the ashes and the ashes have a beautiful hue, so I rescue that. So something that's bad for you, something good comes out of it. Uh, I would really, really like to thank for everybody who was involved with this project to give me this opportunity because it is very important for me to be part of the project like this and for all the artists that they became the citizens of this country this country gave us an incredible opportunity to grow and be what we are. Hey, hi, my name is Marie Valdez and I uh, predominantly work with painting. Um, my uh, background, I'm Mexican-American and I am fourth generation. Um, one of the main things that has been pivotal in my transitioning into painting has been um, I was an, originally a gymnast for 12 years and began to take um, art classes thinking I was going to do art therapy. Um, once I started taking art classes I really began to see an interest um, and the way that I paint or in terms of the process of painting was very similar to the process um, of my experience as a gymnast. Currently my work has been focusing on more very direct environments that I am involved in. About a year ago after the hurricane one of the things that became very prevalent for me um, was our direct environment and how, the, how we kind of go through it every day and how important it is to stop and actually look at the different elements that we are actually in. More recently, I've been focusing on different elements of Houston that I feel can directly relate to the theme that we have um, with the Citizenship Week. Um, the elements that I have been focusing on are, one of them is the Maxwell House Coffee Factory, which has been incredibly interesting to me. So while I was working on the Maxwell House Coffee Factory, I really being drawn to its um, architecture within the landscape. Um, one of the things that became really interesting to me is that it's juxtaposed a very modern uh, environment or architecture on the other side of 59, um, both of which are very integral in terms of how it relates to our economy. Um, one very industrial, one much more business oriented um, in terms of banks, offices, different types of job or, or office oriented environments. Um, but both are so integral in terms of our kind of um, network of how we function in terms of our community in Houston. In terms of my work and how my culture relates to it, um, one of the things that I really like to consider uh, is more cross-cultural issues. 
um, things that begin to integrate throughout cultures. So while my heritage in terms of uh, Mexican-American is incredibly important to me, a lot of the issues that I also consider dealing within my work um, begin to cross cultures. Um, so considering the human condition and how we interact with our internal environment. And being that Houston has incredibly multicultured, um, that element of um, cross-cultural issues has become really important to me. Um, so not just having it be about a Mexican-American issue, but as a broader spectrum, how we all interact with one another within our community. Thank you.